A UTI is a urinary tract infection, typically in the urethra and the bladder. Now, cystitis is just a bladder infection. And if that infection gets bad enough, it can migrate and sort of climb the ureters to infect the kidneys, known as pyelonephritis, aka a kidney infection, which is far more serious. Now, the signs and symptoms are simple, just like any infection. We get a fever, as well as dysuria, painful or difficulty urinating, key term here, burning during urination, as well as urinary frequency, a constant filling or having to void. Now, for diagnostics, we use a UA, a urinary analysis. So we'll see cloudy and smelly urine filled with WBCs, those white blood cells that indicate a general infection. Now, key term here is nitrites. That indicates a kidney infection. And last, a urine culture and sensitivity test can be ordered. So over 10,000 organisms per ml indicates a UTI. Anything less for a culture is typically normal. So big NCLEX tip here, cultures are always taken first, and then we give antibiotics after. So remember, on the NCLEX, we assess first, and then do interventions second. So Hesse mentions a question about cloudy urine specimen is indication of bacteria in the urine, and a patient reporting dysuria and frequency, which test does the nurse anticipate to be ordered? The answer was urine culture. And a Kaplan scenario states that a client with signs and symptoms of a UTI collected a midstream urine specimen two hours prior and left it sitting in the bathroom. What is the nurse's priority action? So the answer here is to discard the specimen and obtain a new specimen. Now, as far as pyelonephritis, click here to check out our brand new app-based NCLEX product loaded with the highest quality NCLEX style practice questions and complete with detailed video rationales that break down the question for you. So finally mastered all those darn select all that apply questions. Plus, all our NCLEX memberships come included with our entire library of over a thousand videos and study guides and cheat sheets. Come see why over a hundred thousand students have trusted their future to simplenursing.com. Click here to get started for free. It's that kidney infection we see the same signs and symptoms as a UTI, but far worse. The key difference here is the pain location. Costovertebral tenderness is described as, key terms, write this down, dull flank pain that extends toward the abelicus, basically the belly button, not the groin area. We see a dull pain that's not excruciatingly sharp. This is typical of kidney stones that tear up the ureters as it descends toward the bladder. The key terms again are dull flank pain on the patient's side. So Hesse mentions this in a question stating, a patient with a temperature of 102.5 grabbing on her left side and complaining of dull pain. The urine specimen appears concentrated with a cloudy appearance. These findings are associated with pyelonephritis. Now the first action is to obtain blood and urine cultures before starting antibiotics. Many students get this wrong. We take cultures first so that we can identify the organism causing the problem and determine the most effective antibiotics to kill it. Now, in terms of the causes, we have urinary retention, which lets bacteria sit in one place for too long, and it's easier for infection to take hold, like in BPH, that enlarged prostate with elderly men. So just think BPH, a big prostate that holds back urine, and even holding urine for too long, known as nurse bladder and even kidney stones or renal calculi, this can also hold back urine. Another big cause in the hospital setting is from Foley catheters. Bacteria can easily climb up the Foley tube and infect the bladder. So the longer the catheter stays in, the higher the risk we have for infection. And lastly, E. coli is the most common cause, generally speaking. Bacteria in the colon gets into the urethra. This is typical for female anatomy where the urethra is shorter than in males and closer to the anus, as well as wiping back to front. This sort of scrapes that E. coli into the urethra, which is very common in children who are learning hygiene and also have a short urethra. Hesse had a question about physiological changes in elderly men admitted with a UTI. Select all that apply. So the answers were prostate enlargement may lead to urinary retention. Remember, 
prostate, that BPH, a big prostate that holds back urine. And secondly, urinary retention increases the risk for UTI. And third, ineffective bladder contraction leads to urinary retention. And Kaplan states, I can go all day without emptying my bladder. Correct answer is, this statement needs further teaching. Now for complications, elderly clients with UTIs quickly turn into urosepsis, infection of the blood that infects the brain. A common manifestation is confusion. So this is the most concerning assessment finding requiring immediate follow-up since it can indicate a stroke or other complications until that sepsis is ruled out. Kaplan had a question about a 72-year-old patient suddenly becoming disoriented to person, place, and time. And the answer is to assess for signs and symptoms of a UTI. Now, episodes like this are known as acute delirium. So look for the L's here. Delirium lasts only a moment and are gone once the cause is treated. Now, don't let the NCLEX trick you here. Delirium is not dementia. So for dementia... Just think long-term damage to the brain from long-term diseases or traumas. Again, just think of the memory tricks here. Look for the L's in delirium, L for limited, short-term confusion. Fix the cause, fix the patient. And the M's for dementia is that damage to the brain. Now, in terms of pharmacology, we give antibiotics and analgesics for the pain. So let's play a segment here from our pharmacology master course for the three UTI medications. First on the list is sulfonamide antibiotics, or trimethoprin sulfa. Brand name is Bactrim. Now the mechanism of action is it stops folic acid synthesis. So for side effects and teaching, the word sulfa is in the drug, which makes it a sulfa drug. So remember the acronym SULF. S is for sunburn, so we teach patients to use sunblock and avoid the sun. U is for urine crystals and specific gravity that's high, which means the body is dry. Since sulfas really dry out the body and create urine crystals, aka kidney stones, we teach the patients to L, love the water, always drinking 2-3 to three liters per day. And F, folic acid, we have to take daily. Now contraindications, we have hypersensitivity to sulfa drugs, we always assess for allergies to sulfonylureas like glyburide, the oral anti-diabetic drug. Now, we saw that one big on the HESI exit exam. So the two key points here is if you have a rash on a glyburide, that's a potential allergy to sulfa drugs. And second, it's not pregnancy safe. Next is fluoroquinolones, Levo and Cipro floxacin. Brand name is Leviquin, given to pneumonia and UTI patients. So the key point here is to avoid sun, or keyword, direct sun exposure, and also A for Achilles tendon rupture. Now, that's a huge test tip right there, guys. Write that down. We teach patients to report new muscle pain, and a big contraindication is tendonitis. So, memory trick is floxacin. We call fall oxacin, since you can fall with an Achilles tear, or flexacin, since it hurts when you flex your calf. Now, lastly, Nephrotoxicity is rare, so guys, don't get tricked here. Many students want to avoid floxacin when creatinine BUN is high. So students get confused with floxacin because it sounds very similar to myosin and vancomycin and gentamicin. Guys, those are the antibiotics that kill the kidneys. So be careful with those myosins and not floxacin. Now, our last drug is not an antibiotic. We have phenazolpyridine. Our brand name is Pyridium. It's a UTI analgesic given for pain relief during that burning and irritation of the UTIs. So some instructors stress the pyro in pyrodine, like a pyro fire, since it's used to ease the fiery burning sensations of UTIs and since it turns the body fluid red and orange like a fire. So the key point here, guys, write these down. It's normal. There's no need to report those red and orange urine and body fluids. But we do report liver toxicity symptoms, like yellow skin and sclera. This is known as jaundice. Now, that was a big HESI question. Now, since pyridine stains the underwear and clothing and bedding, 
we teach patients to wear sanitary pads and also wear glasses instead of contacts while taking this med. And we also teach never stop antibiotic therapy, not even when you're starting to feel better. Okay, now lastly for education, always a big topic on exams in terms of select all that apply questions. So please write these down. We want to increase fluid intake to flush out that infection. And Hesse mentions 2,000 mLs of water per day. And secondly, void after sex to flush out any bacteria that might have gotten to the urethra, as mentioned by ATI and Hesse. Third, we take cranberry supplements to acidify the urine, as mentioned by ATI. And we avoid caffeine and alcohol, which may make the urine acidic. So Hesse had two questions about this. Question one, instructions to maximize UTI recovery. And the answer is to drink cranberry juice daily to acidify the urine. And question two, urinary frequency caused by cystitis, that bladder infection. The most helpful advice, select all that apply. So we recommend cranberry juice, encourage increased fluid intake, and discourage coffee, tea, cola, and alcohol to avoid that acidic urine. Now, lastly, please write these down. These are the big no-nos to stop bacteria in the urethra. So no douching, no spermicidal contraceptives, no perennial deodorants, no synthetic fabrics like nylon or spandex. We always recommend cotton underwear. And no bubble baths, but showers are okay. And then very lastly, the most common, always wipe front to back, never back to front. We end up scraping E. coli into the urethra. We actually even have a funny music video on this where we do a parody song to the Miley Cyrus Wrecking Ball song, but all about UTI education. I have a problem when I pee and now it's really burning. What's this I see? There's WBCs, my UA shows leukocyte. Don't you ever say you wipe the wrong way. I got another UTI I must be careful when I wipe Or maybe was that bubble bath Or not wearing those cotton undies Yeah, it, it infected me I ran a marathon in a teeny tiny thong And now bacteria moved around it slowly turned and now it burns and now infection moved around don't you ever say you wipe the wrong way always run to back don't end up like me e coli in my pee now it's really burning i got this burning uti i wish i was a bee and now it's climbing your reader I got infected Blow mare you lie And now there's nitrites in my pee And now it's really hurting Good thing I'm not elderly Or I would have ALOC Because it infected me I never meant to start a war I just let the bacteria in Urethra to my bladder I guess I should have kept it clean And now there's a raging war I let the E. coli in and now I'm taking Levaquin. Don't you ever say you wipe the wrong way, always front to back. I got another UTI, and I have urgent continence from my urethra to my bladder. Yeah, it's really, really. Extremely burning, and now I'm drinking cranberry. 
climb up to my kidney. Leukocytes and nitrites do in my urine analysis. Or for the first year students, my IUA. Someone, please culture me. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this segment. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.